Which laptop should you buy as a freelance translator or writer in 2025? Coming up. Hello and welcome back to the Freelanceverse. Thanks for coming back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I have more of a technical video for you guys. It's also important. It doesn't have much to do with the actual profession of translating, but if you are a translator or a writer uh, going into 2025, you might be thinking of, you know, upgrading your, your working tools, your hardware, or maybe uh, coming up to the Christmas season, you might even wish for something under the tree. So I prepared my things, my uh, top tips that I would give you if I was looking for a new laptop in 2025 for freelance writers and translators. Me personally, I'm not looking for a new one. I got mine in the summer of 2023. So it's definitely still uh, uh, working well. I'm still super happy with it. I'm gonna show you in a second what I actually got last year. Uh, I always recommend people to take the extended warranty because this is now my third laptop, I think, that I've gotten on the extended warranty, you know, so uh, they because I use them so often, so they tend to break within like five years. So if you have the extended warranty, you get the money back, you can buy a new one. I always update it a little bit, uh, you know, from the previous model, because of course, when you get uh, the warranty refunded, then you can spend a bit more because you only have to pay the difference, right? So I definitely recommend that. Now, one question I get often is whether uh, it's better to get a Mac or um, a PC. I have nothing against Apple, nothing against Microsoft. Like I, I, I don't have a preference in that regard, but if you are working as a freelance translator, it does make sense to uh, buy a Microsoft PC and not an, an Apple Mac simply because uh, of compatibility issues. There are a couple of software that don't work with, with Mac and also uh, certain clients don't really, yeah, they just don't like if you don't have the tools that they work with. So it's, it makes your life much easier if you don't go for a Mac. It's also much cheaper. So I would recommend go for a PC. I would definitely recommend to buy a laptop and not a, a stationary desktop PC because uh, simply because of, Freelancers tend to travel quite a lot, right? Me personally, I couldn't live with a with a desktop PC. I really need need my laptop, uh, and it needs to be kind of travel light, right? So the the size and the weight is something I'm gonna talk in a second about because it matters a lot to me. Uh, I I I mean I love these huge Lenovo Think pads. You know they are amazing, but they're so heavy, so I I don't want to travel around with them, and that's why in the end currently I have a Samsung. Actually, I'm going to show you now what I have here on screen, uh, the exact specifications, and uh, of course this is all kind of you know. Uh, individual to me what I prefer but I'm just going to give you tips from my experience what I'm looking for when buying a laptop. So the one thing that I definitely recommend to you because uh, you're working with files constantly so you want a lot of storage right. So when I'm looking at the, at the new laptop I'm immediately looking at least to have 16 gig gigabyte of RAM storage um, so the, the memory the internal memory and a 500 gigabyte hard drive uh, at least, right? I think I have now even a terabyte that's not needed, like it's way too much storage, but 500 gigabyte I would definitely go for. And then in terms of hard drive, you need to decide whether you want an SSD or an HDD. These are the two hard disks you can choose. SSD is a solid state disk and HDD is a hard drive disk. The difference is that an SSD is stored in flash memory, whereas an HDD is an actual magnetic strip, an actual hard disk, right? It depends a bit on your your uh, preferences. For me, I always want an SSD uh, simply because it's faster, it's less heavy, uh, less expensive generally. And uh, for you as a freelance writer, translator, if you clicked on this video, I would go for an SSD as well. So to sum up in terms of memory, check that you have at least 16 gigabyte RAM, RAM, it's called random access memory. That's basically the internal like short term brain of your computer, like whatever it's doing while the process is running. And if you want, and in terms of the hard, hard disk, I would go for at least 500 gigabyte SSD uh, hard disk. In terms of processor, uh, the, the top level processors are i7. You don't necessarily need an i7. I have an i7 for my laptop. Um, everything runs perfectly smooth, even though like Trados is sometimes lagging. I don't know, even with the highest processors, this, this tool is just extremely laggy and huge sometimes. Uh, I have an i7 uh, and i5 is definitely enough for, for the purposes of a freelance translator, freelance writer. Um, 
i7 is more expensive if you want to invest if you can afford it go for an i7 but <clears throat> i5 is definitely enough i would definitely go for a minimum i5 though because this will allow you to have several tabs open we all know that we do research in this tab we work in this tab we we watch a video background music you know uh, linkedin is open so uh, it's not like very cpu intensive tasks that we usually tend to do but a lot of them in parallel parallel so i would go for an i5 minimum Next up, I mentioned already screen size and weight is important if you are working kind of in the digital nomad area and you sometimes work in a cafe or like me, I travel a lot to Switzerland to visit family and I'm always traveling on train and back there. So I want something that's easy. Uh, I can easily put in my backpack and work from anywhere. So 17 inch would be too big for me. It's better if you if you don't have a second screen setup in your usual office where you work most of the time a year you probably should go for a for a 17 inch simply because of the benefit of your eyes or to the benefit of your eyes um, but i have two second screens actually in my so i guess a second and a third screen in my office uh, so when i work at home in my usual place i never actually look at the desktop of my laptop right this is i, I use the other two screens um, so that's why I went for a 15 inch simply because it's much easier to, to travel around it's much lighter uh, so my laptop is actually how heavy let me check quickly it is 1.4 kilograms so it's quite light right there are lighter ones but it's it's in the it's in the lighter area I would not go above 2 kilo if you're planning to travel with it and work from uh, outside of your home uh, if you're really looking for a workstation, you, you don't really like to go uh, outside for working you're just uh, you look for a proper office laptop then you can definitely go for something heavier two and a half like if you go for a lenovo thinkpad for example and you go for a 17 uh, inch screen then it will be at least two and a half kilos if not three right and that's perfectly fine if you want just a powerful machine that is always there or if you're gaming as well you need something very powerful and then it's going to be heavier right? one thing that's very important for us writers or translators is the keyboard that's something that maybe other users don't really look for in a in buying when buying a laptop but it's very important that your keyboard is intuitive me personally i want to have a number pad always on the right side so that's something i i always look for because when you're typing and you know you're working on a big file with a lot of numbers i need to have this notepad i can kind of blindly type numbers with the notepad so i don't want to look at uh, at the top line of numbers or even if they're combined with the with the function keys i don't like that at all so i want uh, a couple of things in my keyboard. I want a clear notepad that's easily uh, usable. I want um, individual keys for my arrow keys. So I don't want them combined with other functions because that is confusing. That's that's not user friendly. I want individual, individual keys for um, page scrolling, for delete button and for insert button and the enter button as well. And preferably you want the control button on the left side and the right side of the space bar. So it's just everything that makes it more easily accessible to type fast and uh, is more user friendly you want in a keyboard. And definitely check also like I have now a keyboard that is uh, because I bought this laptop in Belgium, but I'm actually typing with a German Swiss keyboard. The tech that the, the, and the actual letters don't always match with what I'm typing. Uh, that is very unusual for a lot of people. For me, it works because I never actually look at the keys when I'm type, uh, typing anyways. So I'm actually using a German uh, internal keyboard, but the letters don't match on my keyboard. But for me, it's fine. For a lot of people, that's confusing. So if you live abroad, make sure you check if whether you are using like an Azerty keyboard or a QWERTY or a QWERTS, whatever, you know. I have a touch screen here. The first time I have a touch screen and I, I love it really. It's so cool, especially when I'm editing something. Uh, I do a, a couple of um, voluntary uh, work as well for, for friends of mine, for organizations that, that I just do it for a good cause. And uh, I love the, the little pen that I have and the, the touch screen. So sometimes when I'm doing editing work, I just flip it into a tablet format and I'm actually scribbling the corrections in, in the PDF, you know, uh, that helps my friends out when they, when they are looking through it. They just see with my handwriting in red what should be rethought, what should, if a paragraph doesn't really match with the one below, I just make a big arrow and stuff. So I really like the touchpad. Of course, the touch screen, sorry, of course it's uh, optional, but um, if you can afford it and if you are into this kind of 
hands-on uh, practical working, then it could be uh, useful for you. One thing that I'm not happy about with this laptop is that it only has one USB port. Um, I mean, everything is moving towards USB-C, so I understand that there are two USB-C ports, which is good. I use them all the time, but there's only one USB, like a normal one. What is it? USB-A, probably. And that can be a bit um, annoying because I basically always have my little uh, keyboard and mouse USB plugged in there, right? So, and I'm using that all the time. So I basically don't have any more USB because it's always plugged. Uh, so of course I can have like an extender with that like you can plug in and then you have four USBs, but you don't want to walk around with that all the time. So I would definitely go for something that has two USBs. Um, if I, yeah, I just didn't pay attention to that. That's the only drawback of this laptop. Uh, it has an HDMI uh, output on the left side, which is very important because of the screen setup. So when I'm working at my desktop, I plug in um, an HDMI cable that then has two HDMI uh, adapters attached to it. And there I plug the two screens in it, you know, so uh, it my, my laptop is actually projected to my two office screens. If you're traveling around, I'd recommend buying something that is very durable and sturdy. So the, the more cheaper versions tend to be just plastic and very like cheaply made, you know, just glued together and it falls apart when you travel a lot. So this one is actually very nice, has a metallic finish, everything, the, the finesse of the material is really well done and it's super sturdy. Also, when you're just holding it, the, the, the screen doesn't shake. That's always a test I do for the hinges. You know, I open the screen and I shake the laptop. And if the screen does something like this, then the hinges are really bad. And my last two laptops actually broke at the hinges. That's why I wanted something very sturdy for this one. And last but not least, of course, check battery life. Um, you, might, you, you can never rely on what the manufacturer tells you about the battery life, but there is obviously better batteries than others, right? And um, I mean, if you get an eight hour battery life, mine gets around eight hours. If I, if I, yeah, I can do about the working day without charging if I'm really working on it fully the whole time. And that is probably as good as it gets. Of course, you can always do uh, energy saving modes. Uh, you can reduce the brightness so you can i can go much longer than eight hours if i don't intensely use it all the all the functions to the max but yeah i'm quite happy with the with the battery usage but then again it's only one and a half years old and they tend to like go down significantly after two years so i'm i'm, I'm wondering what next year would happen with the battery but as i said i have the extended warranty so i'm not worried about anything and especially in the first three years everything gets refunded and just i can just get the new one if something breaks so i i wrote down a few options that i would look at if i were to buy a new laptop next year so of course like i have the the samsung convertible uh, galaxy book 3 right yeah so if i was to look for one next year of course i'm very happy with mine so i would still uh, look for a samsung as well so i there is now the samsung convertible galaxy book 4 so one version more than mine mine is still very good now in this shop here where i bought it, it's actually not available anymore i don't know if they don't sell it anymore so i would probably go for the book 4 next year another brand i would certainly look into is lenovo my previous two laptops were lenovo and i was also very happy uh, i found this thinkbook 16 gen 6 uh, that looks very nice it's actually a nice price for what's included it's a an i5 processor um, 16 gigabyte ram 500 gigabyte ssd and the number pad as you can see with individual keys so that's a very nice laptop i would definitely uh, consider that uh, hp is another uh, very nice brand i have an elite book and an envy here they're both uh, well the elite book is a bit cheaper uh, it's again 16 gigabyte ram 500 gigabyte uh, ssd also an i5 processor very nice finishing doesn't look like plastic of course you always need to uh, be care yeah, like you need to actually see because I once had a, an HP and it had this hinge exactly and it broke so I don't know I I don't want to order a laptop anymore online I always want to see it actually and feel the how it's fabricated especially at the hinge and at the at the, at the display um, but that could be I think the envious is uh, has a nicer finishing yeah as you can see it's the hinge is already much better you know it folds to the back uh, but of course, that's why it's much more expensive. This is a very nice 
um, laptop it doesn't have an, a number pad so that's something I would add on top usually you can have a variation with a number pad the ASUS VivoBook is also a very nice laptop uh, that I've heard so I've heard I've never had actually an ASUS but in terms of finishing and metallic and hinges and the actual hardware uh, ASUS is, is very good for actually a, a relatively nice price this has one terabyte and a very nice graphic card as well so it's a great deal uh, that I would definitely look into it. But at the moment, as I said, I'm very happy with mine. So if I were to buy a new one, I would probably update my book three to a book four or even just a higher version of the book three. Uh, but I bought it in a Black Friday deal, which currently are happening. So if you are thinking of buying one, that's why I made this video now. Uh, it's definitely a good time of the year to, to make that purchase. And uh, remember, this is your main working tool. So this is completely uh, tax deductible, right? Not 100% depending on where you live, but probably like 75% you can you can uh, deduct at the taxes. Just check with your accountant. Uh, I definitely did. I, I remember this year, this, this was complete, uh, like 75% deducted. So that's very nice. There you go. Make sure to not, uh, I mean, of course, sometimes you can't afford certain, certain things. So of course, just buy what you can afford. But if you can, don't go too cheap on this because it's your main working tool. And if it crashes, you lose everything. And also you lose valuable time that you can't work, right? So uh, it, I, I invest basically on one big thing in my business. And that's that's a, a good laptop that I'm, that I'm happy with because I literally use it every day. And make sure you get the warranty. It costs you maybe 200 euros extra, but so far I've used it all the time, like three times now I've used it. So <laughs> it was definitely by far worth it for me. I've saved, I've saved in the thousands of euros thanks to it. Um, so I, I swear by it, definitely. Thanks for watching. I'm working currently on a big video that hopefully is finished next week. It was supposed to come out this week, but with the Translating Europe Forum and, and with traveling back to Switzerland, there was no way I could have it done. But I'm hoping to get it done next week. It has to do with Instagram. So I need to do a lot of research because I'm not, I wasn't too versed in it before that. So uh, bear with me. I hope I can get it out next week because it will be very interesting for all of you that want to find jobs on social media. Stay tuned. I talk to you next week. Bye bye.